Good morning, everyone. Trying to get used to wearing this on a different side. Okay, that works. Hope everyone is well this morning. I have uh, just a couple announcements. Um, this Friday, um, we will be at the ranch house at 11 a.m. And at 2 p.m., we'll be at the cottage the cottages, so if you're interested in coming for just a little while, we will be there to um, uh, have a devotional service. Each time is about a half hour, 45 minutes with the um, residents there. Also, um, the Stuff the Bus and the United Way, they were looking for volunteers to help with stuffing the backpacks and sorting through the many items that were received and looking for volunteers on July 13th and 14th, which was yesterday, uh, or to end today at Staples, Walmart, and Target. And also on the distribution day, which will be at Garfield High, I mean Garfield School on July 25th. So if you're interested in either one of those, please let us know. And, um, we have uh, the Community Health Fair at Stevens Park will be on Saturday, July 27th from 8.30 to 1 p.m. That evening, we will have our Alzheimer fundraiser, spaghetti dinner, and silent auction like we did last year. It was a pretty neat event. Uh, the doors will open at 6 p.m. and at 6.30, uh, we'll begin serving dinner, but you can uh, do our earlier things, uh, silent auction items prior to that. And then on Saturday, August 3rd, we'll have our Northeast Community Health and Resource Fair here from 8.30 to 1. And that'll be here. And right, as of right now, we have about 14 to 15 different... Um, Let's see, 14, 15 different uh, vendors that will be here, um, County Health Department and more. Um, I have to check with Troy Davis about the um, car seat check. Because you know those car seats have expiration dates on them. So he comes and he does a car seat check. And last year, you know, there were two or three that were uh, were replaced by uh, Troy Davis because they weren't working properly. And then there were at least two children who were sitting in seats that were not even car seats. They were just sitting there with no, no restraints, just sitting in a booster type chair. So that's all the announcements I have. Are there any other announcements? If not, let us God. With the passion and joy of King David and all the people who sang and danced before the Ark of the Covenant. Let us worship our Savior with songs of praise and thanksgiving of the Apostle Paul and all who are blessed with every spiritual blessing. God has blessed us in our Lord Jesus Christ, destined us to be children of God, and sealed us in the Holy Spirit. Let us worship God.
God the creator, God of the cross, you show your power in whirling galaxies and unseen forces. You show your love in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Drive out the evils that threaten to break our spirits and help us to rely on your all-sufficient grace. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The godliness of Jesus Christ calls us to be holy and blameless. The riches of God's grace promise forgiveness of our trespasses. Let us confess our sins. Holy, holy, holy Lord, you are the God of glory. We confess that we often forget that your holiness is dangerous. We take our impurities for granted, make excuses for the sins we commit, and expect you to overlook the harm we cause while still demanding justice from others. We do not deserve your mercy. Forgive us and return us to a right relationship with you. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, you made us for the purpose of praising you. Enlighten us with the Holy Spirit so that we cannot fill our calling in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to the riches of his grace, which God has lavished upon us and sealed for us by the promised Holy Spirit, hear this good news. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us take a moment to stand and greet one another, our neighbors and our siblings and our friends with one another with the sign of peace by turning and waving to one another and to those joining online and uh, we can do fist bumps and we can do elbow bumps yes and hugs and elbow bumps and hugs just ask first if you're going to hug someone okay <laughs> Please remain standing as we sing our hymn of forgiveness.
You may be seated. today says um, that David and all of Israel were dancing before God with all their might. They were celebrating that the Ark of the Covenant would be coming to the temple in Jerusalem, and they just couldn't contain their joy. And as Presbyterians, we're not really known for our exuberance. Um, you can tell that was a, a beautiful piece that really moved people because we got some applause, which is, you know, kind of 
the pinnacle of, of enthusiasm that, would, that we usually get in our services. And, um, and some laughs. Laughs are good, too. There should be joy and laughter as we come together to praise God, to be excited that God's promises are as important to us now as they were to the people of Israel back then, the promise that God will be with us wherever we go. And um, so I just encourage us all to, to think about that joy. Maybe not change the way we do things. We are known for order and tradition. Um, but sometimes it's fun, fun to take a little vacation to uh, maybe a different church where, you know, there is some dancing during uh, services. You know, I think about Andre, who's not here. He's still traveling. Um, but, you know, he, he brings those dance vibes. I'm not a dancer. I'm not a singer. Um, I'm not great with jokes. Those are all talents I don't have. But it's really beautiful to see people who really get in that spirit of caught up in the wonder, the fire, the passion, um, and just a little different uh, take on things. So I encourage you all to think about where in your life you could connect with that joy, that over full cup of the goodness of God sometime in your week, maybe not right now. Um, and if you all would pray with me about that. Dear God, Dear God. being able to praise you is a gift. Help us to practice that gift with singing, instruments, dancing, and all manner of joy. Amen.
Spirit of the living God, seal in us your word of truth, the gospel of salvation, so that we can faithfully follow and joyfully serve our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God, and Ohio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines in castanets and cymbals. It was told to King David, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. Our second reading today comes from Mark, 6th chapter, verses 14 to 29. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for these reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of the old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, put him in prison, all of account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. And when his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. 
She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? And she, the mother, replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oath and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the word of God for the people of God. So please pray with me. Gracious God, thank you for this day and the opportunity to come before you in worship and to praise your holy name. Lord, I ask that as you open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our mouths to speak and hear something new, let us also speak of your goodness. I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our collective hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our salvation. Amen. So I want to go back a little ways because Erica, I wasn't thinking about the dancing part of David for today. Thank you, Erica, for, for bringing that out because David danced with all his might. And I'm going to tell you, I just left the General Assembly and it reached a couple times when we were having some very hard discussions, hard discussions on divesting from fossil fuel where a lot of the Presbyterian money actually comes from, from actually seeing, um, uh, well, that was one of them, but there, there were a couple, um, the difference between Islamophobia and the Muslims and the people that we all, all hold dear to us that live in other countries. Well, during those hard times, our new co-moderator said, let's dance, get up, let's dance. And so thanks to Andre, we could do the, elect I could do the electric slide and the Cupid shuffle. You know, we did those type of things because that was a way to relieve some of the tension that was in the air. And so some of the, you know, so dancing is a good thing. Waving your hands is still a good thing. We did, we did the wave thing too, you know. We started on one side. There were 1,500 people, and if you can imagine us waving our hands in this uh, convention center um, doing the wave. So I just want to say, you know, that dancing is good. And, and it, it not only helps us relieve some of this stress, but it also helps us with other things in our bodies. So the, our scripture in 2 Samuel tells of David gathering 30,000 men, chosen men. So that's a lot of people to go with him to get the ark of God from the house of Abinadab. Abinadab was a Levite, and so therefore he was the priestly tribe of Israel. And this is where the Ark of the Covenant was for about 20 years after it was brought back from the area of the Philistines. So can you imagine 30,000 people with no phone, no car, and they're coming together to celebrate the Ark of God coming to them. So what we did not read was the passage between verses 6 and 11. And those passages give an account of what happened so that we can understand why David became afraid of the Lord. That, well, that's there, that, you know, that is in the Bible. Why David became afraid of the Lord and why he did not bring the ark to the city of David directly. So on the first trip 
with the ark, leaving Abinadab. The oxen shook, and Uzzah reached out his hand and took hold of the ark. And God became angry and struck Uzzah down, and he died right there. And at first, David became angry and said, how can the ark of the Lord come into my care? And he was not willing to take the ark into the city of David, opting to take it to another house. Now, this is where we pick up in verse 12. So David's fear of the Lord was short-lived because someone in David's household told David that where he took the ark of God, that household was being blessed because they had that ark. That household was being blessed, and maybe we should go and get that ark. Well, could that have been of jealousy or knowing that if David had done as God had instructed him to do, his house would have been blessed instead. That's the company we keep. Because sometimes, well, let me back up. Because it had to be a trusted member of David's house, first off, to come to David and tell him that another king was being blessed because you left the ark over there. Maybe it was said in passing. Maybe it was said intentionally. Because sometimes there are people in our lives that push us. They may push us to do right. They may push us to do wrong. They may push us to veer from the root in our lives that is most godlike. For instance, we may be doing well in our lives, a good relationship, a home, a car, a decent job, making a decent wage, and then someone who is a little envious, someone who is in our circle, maybe on the outside, and they may say, hey, I heard that so-and-so company is looking for somebody with your skills and qualifications. Are you happy where you are? That other has just planted a seed of doubt as to how happy you may be and how the grass may be greener on the other side. And whether we hear it as a seed being planted or not, our minds hear it, and that stays there. Well, maybe they were right. You know, we might be eating dinner five days from that conversation, and that will come back up in our minds. Then there might be the person who despises you, just as Michal, Saul, uh, who is Saul's daughter, by the way, who uh, looked out her window and despised David for dancing in the street. This may be the person who, at a high school reunion, may say, I thought Susie or Harry had left town. Didn't they used to hang out with your partner? Once again, casting doubt on a relationship that may be built up over many years. But there are some, there are still some, and these are the fewer of the people who maybe just in passing say, I'm praying for you today. Be blessed in the Lord. And that's all the company we keep. That could be on our job. That could be here when you're here during the week and you just come and say, how you doing? You know, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I have to deviate a little bit. This country is supposedly built on the values of justice for all, freedom of speech. But in recent times, these two values seem more of a wish list. Yesterday's attempt on the personal and physical life of former President Donald Trump is a travesty. The personal and mental attacks on Joe Biden is a travesty. The way people who stand out to be elected 
in office today, the way they are treated borders on the ridiculous. Have we become such a cold and callous per people that we are as cold and callous as Herodias was to John the Baptist? This same dynamic appears in our Mark scripture. She say, he say, scorn, jealousy. The disciples, so we started reading in Mark 6, 14. The first part of Mark 6, verses 1 to 13, says the disciples, having been sent two by two on a mission, were sent to spread the news of Jesus to heal the sick, cast out demons, and proclaim that all should repent. Verse 14 says that Herod had heard of the success of the, of the disciples, casting out many demons, and anointed many with oil, and curing the sick. That's in verse 13. And Herod's inner circle was saying that John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, because they have not acknowledged Jesus. They're saying that others, other people are saying that, no, it's Elijah. Elijah is alive now. And still others are saying, no, that's a prophet. There is a prophet like the ones of old. And they're saying it. They're not even giving uh, Jesus and the disciples humanity. They are identifying them as it. But Herod, hearing all these different things, decided that Jesus' disciples were doing all the miracles with John being raised from the dead. Herod knowingly had John beheaded for telling him the truth about his relationship with Herodias and that it was unlawful for Herod to have married his brother's wife. See, Herodias, and so the name Herodias would have been not only the daughter's name, but the uh, mother's name and most of the women in Herod who were concubines of Herod. Herod, Herod hearing all those things and then knowingly having John beheaded, Herodias opted to leave Philip for Herod. And that is what made that marriage unlawful. That's in Matthew 14, verses 3 to 5. Herod liked to listen to the things that John said. That's in Mark 6, 20. But in Mark 6, 21, at a party for the king's birthday, Herodias' daughter danced for Herod and his guests so well. See, we're still dancing. She danced so well that he told her to ask whatever she wanted, and he would give it to her, even half of his kingdom. Not knowing what she should ask for, she went to her mother and said, what should I ask for? Herodias said to ask for the head of John the baptizer, and the daughter went back to Herod. It's the company we keep. Because even though Herod enjoyed listening to the words of John, but the scorn and jealousy of his wife and the oath he swore to her daughter put him in quite a position. The wife, with her grudge against John for proclaiming their marriage unlawful, was in a position finally to rid herself of the one person that was causing her grief. She included her daughter in her scheme, as well as the king. But when she told the daughter what she wanted, not something that the daughter wanted, but something to vindicate herself, the mother, and when Herod was told, there is now a conspiracy and a plot to kill John. You see, Herod could not lose face with his guests. They had heard him say to the daughter that he would do whatever she asked. So he sent a soldier to John 
who was already in prison, had him beheaded, and brought his head to Herod, who gave John's head to the daughter, who then gave it to the mother. It was Jesus' disciples who had heard what had happened. They came, they took his body, they buried him, and then told Jesus all they had did, done. The company that Jesus kept, his inner circle, told him what happened and how they helped to correct the wrong. And these are the type of people that we should have around us. The people that care about the things that we care about. Those that say, I am praying for you today. I know it's not an easy day. I have news for you. You may not like it. Sit down and listen. Those that say, God is good all the time, even in the midst of our troubles and strife, that there is good news. We may not see it right now, but it will become plain in the future. I look at my own life and the times that the wrong people were in my life, those that were envious or shallow or mean or spiteful, and the situations that I that caused me to allow them to be in my life. And then how now the company I keep is so different, so different than the ones I used to keep. The company I keep now are more um, uplifting, more able to give a kind word and not so spiteful. And one scripture, and some of you know I use this on just about everything, Isaiah 43, 18 to 19 says, not to remember the former things because God is doing a new thing. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that if you are a new creation in Christ, the old has passed away and the new has come. See, this is all good news. This is all good news that the redemption and the salvation of Jesus Christ has given us a new spirit, a new walk, a new talk, and even the company we keep has changed. Hallelujah and amen. Please join me in our affirmation of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve with believers in every time and place. We rejoice that nothing in life or in death to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Consider what God has given to us in Jesus Christ. Remember that even now the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Rejoice that we are a part of God's plan for all time. Let us present our offerings of thanksgiving. Please note that the church accepts offerings in person, check or money order by mail, online through the website www.pcusagardencity.org and during the week uh, during office hours. Glorious God, you created us because you are love. It is your will and our destiny that we live into the full humanity of Jesus Christ 
so that we can praise you. Give voice to creation's joy and join with all things in heaven and on earth to rejoice in your goodness forever. Thank you for this high calling and privilege. We bring an offering taken from the gifts you have given us. Because they come from you, they are holy. Because you have given them to us, you honor us as if we are holy. As we return them to you with our thanksgiving, bless them with the power of your love so that they may touch the lives of others and inspire them to join us in giving you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Amen. It is now time for prayers of the people.
Holy Abba of our Lord Jesus Christ, who sends the Holy Spirit to help us in our praying. Open our senses to your creation and our hearts to the needs of others. Grant us faith, hope, and imagination to see your vision of the fullness of time, when weapons will be crushed by peace, stomachs will be filled by abundant harvest generously shared, and thirst quenched by, more, by pure rain falling from clean skies. Diseases will be healed, minds made clear, and bodies made new, so that all things reveal oneness in Christ. Even now, Abba, empower us by the Spirit to serve Christ in love by sharing your vision and working in the world for which Christ died and rose and prays and is coming to complete in resurrection. We pray these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught the disciples, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able and join in our closing hymn, God Be the Love to Search and Keep Me, number 543. Do not hold back the power of the Spirit. Celebrate with all your might Christ's victory over sin and death. Be brave and tell the truth about evil. Serve the weak. Comfort the grieving. 
Encourage the despairing. Honor everyone to whom respect is due. And remember that in life and in death, body and soul, that you, we, us, belong to God, who promises resurrection in Jesus Christ. So may the Holy Trinity fill you with joy, surround you with peace, and lead you to eternal life. Amen.